have the summary report in front of you. I'll just summarize uh, some things from existing industry projects uh, and existing industry expansions. Uh, we'll begin with Project Maroon. That's our bioscience project. That project continues on course. We have a term letter uh, through the Georgia Department of Economic Development with the company, and they are completing their due diligence. So we're expecting um, some word on uh, where we stand with regards to that project in early 2014 as they move forward with their site selections around the state of Georgia. Uh, project Express Scripts, uh, you know, we've talked about that project every month for the past six months. Uh, they are in uh, the final stages of their work here on the first cohort training program. Uh, they had originally projected to hire and train 125. I'm happy to tell you that they've hired and trained 135 and have had very good success in our community. We're now working with them for a second cohort training program, uh, which would begin mid-year in 2014, uh, looking to hire another 125 customer service reps and train them here in the community. So that's been a very good project uh, for our community. Uh, project Harvest, we've talked about that project before. Uh, as you'll recall, that's our company that uh, fabricates and services uh, harvesting equipment. Uh, they had a, a, a very good show uh, at the recent Sun Belt Ag Expo. They have introduced a new project line of digger equipment, which they're looking to fabric begin to fabricate uh, in the U.S. with some partner companies and begin to market that in uh, in 2014, so we're uh, we're now in the process of deciding between an existing industry building for them or a greenfield location. So that project is moving along nicely. You can see our existing industry report uh, in front of you. We visited those four industries, and of course, as always, we're looking for opportunities uh, for, for product or pro project expansions, and also to identify any issues that we may find that we could assist uh, those companies with. Also under our existing industry visits, we're now going to uh, portray for you expansion projects for existing industries just to give it a little bit of differentiation between uh, some other new projects we're looking to bring into the community of the region. Uh, you've seen uh, several of these before. Uh, Project Wire, we continue to work. Uh, one of the things that we have uh, completed in the last 30 days with that company is working with uh, the Georgia Department of Labor and, and doing an assessment of workforce skills because as they begin to expand with the new hires, uh, that's something that they need to start to pay attention to. We're still working with an architect and a developer on site selection and a location for the expansion. About a 50,000 square foot manufacturing facility. Project uh, Treadway is a uh, fairly new project. It's logistics distribution service. Uh, we have uh, been working with uh, local company reps over the last 30 days. We now have a site plan. We're waiting for architectural elevations and renderings so we can bring those together. And then a final uh, review of some preliminary engineering. And we'll be bringing that to uh, board members individually for a review and their assessment for how we uh, move forward with that. And we anticipate doing that in the next 15 days. So we'll be uh, calling you and and asking you to sit with us to review that project. Uh, project PowerTech, that's an advanced manufacturing project. That's a new project. It's a fairly significant expansion for a local industry. We're now doing some financial due diligence and gathering their requirements so we can uh, begin to build out an economic development city package that would support that project. Uh, project uh, X Square is a uh, is another existing industry that's looking at a, a significant expansion. Uh, it would be a new product line and an expansion of the existing product line and the potential for about 60 new jobs. And we would be looking uh, to mature that project in Q1 or Q2 of 2014. Uh, the next project is Project GH 2013. That's especially product formulation and packaging. Uh, we've been working that project, as you know, for about the last uh, 90 days. Um, Mr. Gupton and I have uh, worked through economic development uh, documents and indenture of lease documents, uh, working with the, uh, the business owner and leadership team. Uh, we're, we're ready to finalize those now, so we're projecting to do that in the December timeframe. 
That'll represent about a $1.3 million capital expansion of an existing facility in 10 to 12 new jobs. And finally, Project Patient. Uh, it's a company uh, that we've been working with over the last six months, actually really over the last 12 months, uh, to help them find a new location and potential for expansion, uh, medical service industry. Uh, we believe they found a home and they're in final negotiations with the property owner and we're helping them move forward with that. Uh, those were the existing industry projects and the new projects that I wanted to discuss with you briefly. I, I do applaud the idea of trying to actually highlight our local industry expansions. They're, they aren't bringing somebody from overseas or out of state. However, some of these, I mean, a 60 job potential, a 30 job potential, multi-million dollar, they're new buildings, they're new tracks. So I think it's only right that we give them what the credit that's due on these projects. And of course, they're just as much work for you guys as somebody from out of state. And we're, we're very sensitive to that. So thank you. Well, that's what we're looking for. I was going to highlight, um, too, that, um, you know, the standard number is about 70 to 80 percent of new jobs in the community and actually in the state of Georgia come from your existing industries. The majority of that is expansions. And sometimes our, you know, in our community, we don't see the benefit of how much those existing industries grow, just like what you just pointed out. And um, during my Leadership Lounge class, one of the questions was, why don't you do for existing industries what you do for new? We actually do more wow. for our existing industries than what we do for new projects because they're invested in our community. So um, not only just from our, you know, maybe it may be financial incentives, but it's the workforce development initiative that Alan's going to talk a little bit about, uh, more about. You know, it's facilitating relationships between city and county individuals and, you know, what other state agencies they may need. So we do a lot more for our existing industries. And some of you have been on the board, of, you know, a while that know that and been around, Steve, how much we do do for our existing industries and what we have done. I have a question about uh, Project Patient. Yes, sir. Um, what would be the educational requirement for the, the new jobs for that particular firm? Um, wouldn't it be uh, secondary education, um, more than tech school? Um, what would it be? Uh, they well, they do have some specific requirements. Uh, there, much of this is in the customer relations business. So uh, they are... It requires advanced computer skills? Uh, I wouldn't say advanced computer skills, but it does, it does require computer literacy. Uh, and that's a very it would be important more aspect like of the combination of both yes. higher education and... Uh, Absolutely. Th this, th this is one of those that I, I think that the requirements and the educational requirements are a step higher than what we normally see. And, and this, this enthuses me a lot. And I, and I, I think this is one of them. Well, thank you. And, and one of the things that we've been working on, and that's a great segue to the Workforce Development Initiative, is to help those uh, industries uh, like Project Patient understand what's available to them, how they can partner with uh, Wiregrass Georgia Tech, with the university, with Georgia military, and also to understand potential opportunities for co-ops and intern programs with the Valdosta City School System, and with the Lowndes County City School System. Uh, and they, both of those school systems have some good programs in place that we learned about this week that could really benefit our local industry. Great. And I thought, Mary, you can reiterate any of this if you'd like to. Um, I was very proud of our school systems and how much they talked about how much they do work together. And, you know, they really built their presentations between the two public school systems. Um, they talked to each other about it. So that they didn't, reiterate the same information they built upon each other's information so I think that was um, an interesting um, our existing industries were very happy to hear that and very pleased with what they hear heard. and I think the way they structured that with one school system providing a global overview that really touched on what both systems do and then the other school system talking about not only the specifics of the detailed programs they have but how they relate to the ones in the other school system. That was impressive mm -hmm. to see. Well, and I think there was some excellent dialogue between the two school systems and the industries about 
how the industries could come into the schools to help the schools and the parents and the children, but then the schools could also help the, the industries with, in reciprocal communication. Sure. So yeah. it's a good deal. Well, the thing I like about it is this, this is a home-based, developed type business here, and they've got the potential of expanding into a major corporate office here. And not, they don't have to locate it in Chicago, New York, any place like that. They grow their own business here because of the technology you got this day and time and work with all this stuff and work with it. And it's just got a major, major opportunity for all of us. Well, I'll just wrap the community business.